power of your words. I am so glad that sitting here, I can bring in this simple but very effective message to each and everyone who hears me. It is, it is so powerful, but at the same time, it is made so simple by God that we can understand God and see and feel and experience the creative power of God that we see in chapter 1 of Genesis 1 1. When God said, Let there be light, it, the, the light came. When God said, When God made the heavens and the earth, He was actually, he's, He said it and it, it, it was created. It's the same power which God. Ha, God has in him is given to us. In uh, Proverbs 18, 21, it says that uh, life and death are on your tongue. Uh, the power of life and death is on your tongue and you will enjoy the fruit of the, 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 the mouth. So, if you really want to get blessings and goodness in your life, you have to have a different outlook about life and you have to have the same creative power of Jesus Christ inside you so that when you say things, the things come to life. But if you say negative things, the problem is that all what you say negative about cursing others, saying bad things others, judging others, they grow around you, they come back to you. On the other hand, if you start saying like Jesus did and seeing things as he did, we will see the same blessings following us. That is when we can say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The power of confession, I want to speak about the power of confession. Uh, what is the meaning of confession? Let me read from the dictionary. What is the dictionary says? The dictionary meaning is confession is, the Cambridge dictionary says, an act of admitting that you have done something wrong or illegal. Confession is the first stage of coming in terms with what you have done. An occasion when a Christian tells God or a priest, formally or privately what they have done wrong and so they can be forgiven. It is all in the, in the negative sense we are seeing it. Whatever we have done something wrong, we come to repentance and confess. That is what actually the dictionary says. Confession also has in the noun, there is another meaning, acknowledgement, avowal and admission. This is what I am going to take. Acknowledgement, Avowal and admission. Confession of faith, a formal acceptance of doctrine, agreeing to or saying the same thing as God says. The Apostles' Creed in the church, what, what the churches, uh, most of the churches use the Apostles' Creed. They are agreeing to the faith which they possess and they are repeatedly saying it every week so that they become life to them. So, this, uh, these uh, uh, faith verses which we say with our mouth on Sundays have an effect on us and on the children and on the grandchildren and on the family, on people around us. It is so powerful. So, what is the fruit of your lips? Are you saying good things or are you really bringing curse on your own family? Suppose example, if you are sick, the doctors say as per the, the medical examination and report that a person has got cancer or some, some, sometimes they have got tumor or they have got uh, mental illness or any, anything. The doctors say that it is incurable, but what does the Bible say about it? The Bible says that by his stripes we are healed. Every single cell in my body is actually created by God and I am the, 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 uh, the Holy Spirit is permanently 
not temporarily like in the Old Testament, permanently residing inside me. So, I believe what the Bible says, the Bible says I am healed and so declare that I am healed by his stripes, by his stripes I am healed, I am cleansed by the blood of Jesus, no enemy can touch my body, every single cell in my body is made by God and he will act accordingly, act normally. So, we keep on claiming that, I, I see many people especially after the age of 50, they keep on telling I am sick, I am weak, I can't do things, I cannot bend over and I, I always think even if we tell them to do small job also, I, I see that they refuse to do it because they really uh, make themselves believe what they say. They say they are not capable, they say they are weak. If you say 10 times you are weak, you will be weak. If you say you can't get up on, on every day in the morning, you will be lying down in the bed. <clears throat> so, when you say things, on the other hand you say that, I may be weak, I do not care, I am going to wake up, I am going to get up, I am going to walk. So, gradually train your thinking in, by saying things which is according to the Bible and claim it for yourselves. Proverbs 4.22 says that God's words are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. The, the word of the Bible, that is the living word, then if you really find them, you are a blessed person. And if you say to that, that these words are health to me, they become health to, they are a health to a man's whole body. It's not say, it does not say that uh, some sickness are exempted, some diseases are, no. Every sickness, every situation in our life, we can say or rebuke it, refute it and say with your word that I am not going to be susceptible to it. I am an overcomer in Christ Jesus and I will come over this. I will be walking victoriously in Christ Jesus. I have seen people with sickness, terminal diseases. Those who have got Christ in them, they face their life and in a challenging way and they fight until the last minute and even in the last minute you suppose that comes to them, they take it nicely. But on the other hand, if you do not have Christ inside you, every sickness is an agonizing thing, not only to you, the people around you and people get disheartened and you curse yourself and you become a burden to yourself and to people around and to God also. What is the use? God does not want us to be like that. No matter what, as long as there is a little breath inside me, I will talk of the goodness of the Lord and enjoy the good things in my life and every word in the Bible is profitable to me and they are for my good. Start saying things like that, it will change, it will change. When John the Baptist was on this earth, he knew what he was called for. He, there is a verse in Isaiah 43 says that this is the voice calling out in the desert for the coming in of the, the Lord. It is a forerunner. God always uses somebody to proclaim things. It is called a forerunner of Christ. John the Baptist was forerunner of, the, of, the, of Jesus Christ. When John, John the Baptist came to earth and he was preaching, the, the Jewish people inquired, or sent people asking, the Levites and the priests came and asked, who are you? Are you the Christ? He said, no, I am not. Are you Elijah? No, I am not Elijah. Who are you then? So that we, I am asking you, we are asking you so that we can take the answer back to the people who send us. So then he says that, I am the voice that proclaims the coming of the living God. I am the forerunner to Jesus Christ. He knew it from the very beginning that he was created by God for that particular purpose alone. Do you, do you and do I know that I am made for that particular thing and I am, I am really good at that, I stick with that. No matter what other people say about me, I stick with what God says about me and I am not going to wander from here, I stand firm on this belief. Because when God, the Holy Spirit is inside you, the Holy Spirit gives you the conviction and then Holy Spirit makes you to work and behave and walk accordingly. John the Baptist knew his, uh, uh, the destiny of him. 
but we the Christians, do we really know what is our, our destiny? Do we know? What does the Bible say about us? The Bible, we really have to agree with the Bible. When God said in chapter 1 of Genesis that let us make man in our own image, the let us make man in, when the first chapter Genesis is that God created the heavens and the earth. It is actually Elohim. It is a plural thing. God the Father, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit made everything. And we see in chapter 1 of Genesis, God said, God said, let there be light. God said, let the water be separated from the water. God said, let the land come up from separated from the water. Lord said, let there be vegetation. Every time he has to create something, it is God saying things with his mouth. Soon as God, Jesus said something, the Holy Spirit comes into life and the Holy Spirit gives life. So, what does the Bible say about us? The Bible says that we are created in his own image. We have the representation or we are representing God the Almighty on this earth. We are not a byproduct of the revolution. We have not come on this earth by a big bang. No, that is not right. We are not actually and we are we are not actually coming from the from the monkeys or from any animals we are the image of living god so if you really downplay who you are if you downplay the glory which god has placed inside you the devil has an upper hand the devil is the arch enemy of god and he is the arch enemy to human beings because god loves us he created us for his pleasure so when when god when god created human beings devil knew that his time is over but he is trying to to manipulate the truth or twist it in such a way that we get confused. We are confused with many theories. We are confused with many things which we see with our naked eye. Our spirit is so, so dormant that the spirit is not able to come forth and say that I know who I, who I am because God says in the Bible and it is true that I am an image of the living God. I remember when I was in Saudi Arabia, one of the Bible teachers, she used to put the Bible on her head and say that I believe in the Bible and every word in the Bible I believe it is true and whatever God said in the Bible is yes and amen. We are actually the walking Christ on earth when we are in God. When we are in Christ, we are supposed to say what God said on this earth. We are according, we are to tune in our words as per the Bible says. If we are not doing it, we are not actually walking as per the living God's principle. We are deviating from the truth which God has given. I have to go, when John the Baptist said, I agree with what God said about me. He said that I am the voice in the work calling out in the desert about the coming of Christ. I am the forerunner of Christ. He agreed with that and he was happy with that and he did his job. He is known all, all throughout the Bible and all throughout the Christian world and he did his part well. And God says that he is one of the greatest prophet in, in, born for women. So, what, what God is telling that we in the New Testament period, because we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, we have God Christ inside us and he is dwelling in us and we have the power with us and, and the life and death are on the power of our tongue.